It all began for us in 1945, plus or minus a year. The 20th century had experienced World War I, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, and now the Second World War. The war to end all wars was finally coming to an end. Everyone the world over had been a part of this conflict in one way or another. Terrible evils had been inflicted on many innocent people. Millions of people died. But there was new hope in the world, a hope that the next generation would experience a better life. We were that generation. And we did come to live in a better world than our parents. We were the first wave of baby boomers, which technically didn't begin until 1946. World War II was also the beginning of the atomic age and nuclear war. The man from independence, Harry S. Truman, effectively ended the war by ordering atomic bomb drops on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It obviously wasn't a perfect world. Even in America, there were those who were still outcast and unable to experience the same rights and benefits of other Americans, even though many gave their lives in the fight for freedom. Blacks, Hispanics, and other minorities still faced prejudice and segregation, much like they had before the war. Many of the Fort Osage High School class of 1963 attended reorganized school district number one all of their lives. They lived in the small towns of Buckner, Sibley, Levesey, and Atherton. Others lived on nearby farms. There were many small, even one-room schoolhouses in our district in the early 50s. They were later consolidated to only four schools. Finally made it, Fort Osage High School 1960. We could put away those eighth grade pictures and Terry could forget about that eighth grade hair. Everybody's doing a brand new dance now. We started getting comfortable in our new surroundings rapidly. Locker space seemed more than adequate and we elected freshman class officers. We'll be showing you many Fort Osage club groups during this video. Our first group is the Conservation Club, sometimes known as the Tree Huggers. And here's our senior group of newspaper and yearbook people. Our class had many fine women athletes. Unfortunately, Fort Osage had no sports programs for girls when we were students. So as we begin our basketball segment, here are a few pictures of our girls' elementary basketball teams. We hit the ground running in our sophomore year. By then, we acted like we owned the place. Class leaders stepped forward and told the rest of us where to stand. Come on, baby. Let's do We had people in our class we rarely heard from, as well as some fine natural athletes. Come on, 
Was there ever a teenager that didn't want a car? A car embodied everything a teenager wanted. Freedom, independence, speed, power, and yes, sex. You know, the same things guys buy a car for today. And while we're discussing testosterone-powered subject matter, here's a picture of the O-Club. We call it the O-Club to keep it simple for some of the guys. This was a club where you could buy a nifty and expensive letterman's jacket, usually as a senior, that you would never be seen dead wearing again after graduation. Many of us raised our voice in song. Wow! I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. Those of us who could carry a tune were in I choir. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. So good. So good. I got a year. Wow, we, 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 we,
In our junior year, it just kept getting better and better. Many of us excelled in activities outside of the classroom. For example, at Boys State, and here's Sandra's County 4-H Queen. We had plenty of cut-ups in our group. We just don't know what some of us were cutting up. Carol and Jerry were our school spirit leaders. Don't you leave my heart in misery. If you go, then I'll be The unique thing about the French Club in our senior year was that none of us were in it. But those folks could party. Just look at those French club dancers. Nice legs. Those who like to talk and argue often make great debate club members. We were lucky to have the legendary Lewis Banker as our debate coach. His teams travel in his little microbus or a larger one more than any of our sports teams. And they won tons of trophies. Patty and I always went for the laugh, even when it got us in trouble. We had classmates who would talk to anyone who would listen. In fact, it really didn't matter if you were listening. Sharon and Steve could flirt with the best of them. Here's our class personality plus duo. You could always count on Peggy and Stan. As you know, looking good is better than feeling good. And these two look marvelous. Everybody thought these two would really clean up. And they were right. Some folks just always looked good. They probably ironed their underwear. On senior day, we were allowed to show the rest of the school what fools upperclassmen could be. The teachers could be good sports, too. Isn't that Walt Marsh? Oh, there's a crazy little shack beyond the tracks. For our senior trip, we went to Chicago. Everyone packed into a domed observation car and acted like big shots. There was lots of talking as well as some relaxing. We toured as much of downtown Chicago as we could and had a great time. The school board must have thought so too. Our class was the last to enjoy a senior trip. On graduation day, we donned our caps and gowns, marched across the stage to pick up our diplomas, posed for pictures, sang the school song one last time, said our goodbyes, and went off into the crazy world of the 60s as young adults. Our years together had finally come to an end. Trees swaying in the summer breeze Showing off their silver leaves As we walked by Soft kisses on a summer's day Laughing all our cares away, just you and I. Sweet, sleepy warmth of summer nights, gazing at the distant lights in the starry sky. They say that all good things must 
some great reunions over the years. Here's some family shots from our earlier ones. largest and most elaborate reunion to date has been our 25th reunion in 1988. Many people worked hard to make this a great event. There was a banquet, a party, and a picnic. Principal and coach Walt Marsh was our guest speaker. He made it seem like old times. John Toms, report to the office, please. <laughs> Just put my foot right there. Yeah, just look right in there. Oh, that's good. Right, right there. Just talk about who you are. J.R. Nelson. Well, you already got this. Is Roll Trollin? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. This is Roll Trollin. What you want to do? Hi. I'm Pete Trollin. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations. Yeah, I'm just saying, oh, you're doing video tape. Oh, okay. Hello, video tape. I'm Tom. <laughs> Sometimes we walk hand in hand by the sea And we breathe in the cool salty air You turn to me with a kiss in your eyes And my heart feels a thrill beyond compare Jerry Brown has always been there for all of his classmates. This video is dedicated to all of us, but especially to Jerry. Like so many other reunion projects, it wouldn't have been done were it not for him. Thanks, Jerry. Mm -hmm.